Hello! This is an After Effects tutorial, hopefully part of a series aimed at beginners. Let's get straight into it. When you open After Effects, you are presented with a UI that might be daunting the first time you look at it. If you've never used After Effects before, it is always helpful to have a game plan in mind to guide you through the process of learning. For this video, we are going to do something very simple. We are going to make a blue circle on a red background, and we are going to have the circle move from left to right. Now keep in mind, After Effects is a compositing software, not an animation software. And although animations are possible to do, and third-party plugins can expand on this capability, I believe that it is always best to learn the software most suited to the task at hand. But if you are more comfortable with one software over another, then go right ahead. As I've mentioned before, however, this is a tutorial series aimed at the most absolute of beginners, so chances are you aren't comfortable with anything yet. So let's briefly go over what each window is and what it does, and then we will work on our circle. Up at the top, we have all of our buttons for easy access to commonly used tools. We have our mouse pointer for simply clicking on things, our hand tool for moving around with, a zoom tool for zooming in and out, rotation for rotating objects, a 3D camera tool for manipulating things in 3D space, a pan behind or anchor point tool for moving the anchor point of an object around. And of course, I will explain if you don't understand what some of these are later. A shape tool for drawing shapes. A pen tool for manipulating bezier lines. A text tool. A brush tool. A clone stamp tool. An eraser tool. A roto brush tool. And a puppet pen tool. Now, we're not going to use all of these in this first episode, and in fact, most of these we won't use for a while, so if you don't know what they are, don't worry about it. On the left, we have a project window and effect controls window. Our project window is where all of the assets for our project is going to be. Audio, video, images, shapes, solids, compositions, everything. Effect controls will let us change effects once we have applied them to something. At the bottom of our project window, we have a button marked Create a New Composition. Next to it, we have our Bits Per Color Channel Depth. We can leave it at 8 for now. If you need to change it, you will know, but for our work and most of the work that we will be doing, we will keep it at 8. The Project Settings window that it opens when you click on it also allows you to change a few settings. Again, nothing pertinent to what we'll be doing. Clicking on our Create New Composition button opens up our composition presented with this window. A composition is a very useful thing to understand, but to keep it simple, think of a composition as a scene. Everything we want in our final scene needs to be in the same composition, and without a composition, we have nowhere to put our assets. Now, each time you click the button to create a composition, you will be presented with this window. At the top, we can name our compositions, which we will name Moving Circle. You can name it anything you'd like. However, do note that as your projects get more complicated, you will want an easy to parse naming system for your compositions so that you can keep track of what each one does. Below that, we have our Basic and Advanced tabs. In our Basics tab, we have a preset drop-down menu that allows you to quickly choose a group of settings for your composition or if you need, you can change it custom. For now, we will use this preset, which lets our width and height be 1920 by 1080 at an aspect ratio of 16.9. Our pixels are square and our frame rate is 29.97. This is what I like to call YouTube gold. It's essentially the high, this is what will be high definition for YouTube. We also have resolution, which we will leave at full, our start time code, and our duration. Our start time code is simply where you want the composition to start on the timeline. For now, we'll let it start at zero. Duration is how long the composition will be. We will change that to 10 seconds. Lastly is the background color, which is only the color that appears as the background of the composition. The color does not show up in the render and is really just a visual representation of nothing at all. It is usually easiest to leave this as black, but sometimes changing the color to a more contrasting color to your work helps identify problems. All of these settings can be changed later if need be. If we click OK, we have our composition. 
As you can see in the project window, our composition is now an asset that we can use. Our bottom window has changed into a timeline instead of the render queue, and our center window now contains black. The center window is the viewer and is what will be rendered into the video when everything is finished. Anything you see here, excluding the background color chosen in the composition settings, is rendered into the final product. To zoom out a little, we can either use the zoom tool in the top right hand corner, or we can change the zoom level down using these buttons that appear. We'll click this 200% and change it to fit up to 100. Now remember our shape tool? We want a blue circle, so let us click on the tool and draw a circle out, much like you would in paint. However, this is not a circle, this is obviously a rectangle. To change the shape tool, simply click and hold on the icon, or press Q to cycle through the options. To get rid of the shape that we already drew, we can simply click on the shape layer that appeared and press delete on our keyboard. Now that we have our circle shape tool, we can draw it out just like we would in paint, or we can hold down shift while drawing to make it a perfect circle. If we also hold down control, our circle will size from the center. As you can see, however, there's a stroke around the circle that we don't want, and the circle is red, not blue. To change that, we can go up to the fill and stroke options at the top. To change the fill option, we simply click the color and then select the color that we want to use for our circle. To remove the stroke, let's bring the pixel size of the stroke down to zero by dragging to the left. Now we have our circle. Next, we need our background. Now you might think to create a large red square as the background, and while that is an option, we can also right click on our timeline and go new, solid. This solid gives us options, such as the name and color and size. We will make the color red, and we will change the name to background. Unfortunately, it looks like our circle has disappeared. To change that, we have to look at the timeline. Now think of the timeline like a stack of assets. Things that are on the top of the asset pile are going to appear first, and things that are on the bottom of the asset pile are going to appear last. Since our solid covers the entire screen and is not see-through, it covers our circle. All we have to do to fix that is drag our background below our circle or drag our circle above our background. Since we are looking here at our timeline, I've actually noticed that our circle isn't called circle, but it's called shape layer one. To fix that, we can simply click on the shape layer and press enter and then type in the name that we want. This can be done with any asset we have on the timeline. Now we want to move our circle from the left to the right. To position it to the left, let us first change our tool to the selection tool, click on our circle, and move it over to the left. Ah, but it seems we've misclicked and moved the background instead. We can simply undo Control Z to fix that, and to make sure it doesn't happen again, we can use the lock button right here so that the background will no longer move. Now let us move the circle over to the left. What we want to do is have the circle over the course of one second to move over to the right. What I am going to do is introduce to you the concept of keyframes. Now this is a very important concept that we will go more in depth in another video, but keyframes are simply this. You are telling the computer that at a certain point in time, you want an asset to be in one state and at a different point in time, you want the asset to be in a different state. Now the reason I say state is because keyframes can do almost anything. You can keyframe position, rotation, opacity, size, you could keyframe the stroke width or the color, you could keyframe effect values, you could keyframe even time itself. So what we want to do is for the circle to be here at zero seconds and at one second, we want the circle to be over here. To do that is very simple. We can go to our circle, select transform and bring down the drop down menu and then select position or alternatively press P on the keyboard, then press the stopwatch, then press the stopwatch to start the ability of keyframes. By doing that, we've created a keyframe at zero seconds for the circle to be at this position. At one second, we want the circle to be over here. Now, if we scrub backwards in the timeline, you can see that the computer has actually filled in the blank for us and that the circle moves across the screen as though we had animated it. 
So we have our circle animating from left to right. It's a blue circle on a red background and it traveled over the course of one second. We're almost done. There's only a couple more things that we have to do. First, we have to get rid of all this extra empty space we have in our timeline. To do that, we can simply drag the composition slider over to the left so that it encompasses everything that we want to be rendered, then right click on it and select Trim Comp to Work Area. As you can see up here, the numbers have changed and our composition now lasts the length of the animation. If we want to be more exact, we can use the zoom slider down here to zoom into the keyframe to make sure that our composition lasts exactly the length of the animation. Lastly, we need to render the file. To do that is very simple. Simply go up to File, Export, and then Add to Render Queue. Alternatively, you could use the Adobe Media Encoder Queue, but we're going to use the Render Queue. When you've done that, the Render Queue will show up for you. There are a lot of different ways to render a video, and some people say that their way is better than others, but I simply leave my settings at best and lossless so that if I need to mess with it later, it's as high quality as I possibly can. I'm not too worried about file sizes because I have a lot of space on my computer. We also have to select where we want our file to be rendered. To do that, simply click on Not Yet Specified and select where you want it to go. Then click Render. And that's it. You've rendered out your animation and now you can watch it. And you've made your first After Effects video. Next video, we will go more into depth on some of the panels on the right side, which I did intentionally gloss over, um, as well as more information on keyframes. I hope you enjoyed.